All right, guys, good afternoon. Today is a big, big day for my Wicked Cruiser, uh, Step Through Cruiser. I sent this motor back that I just got back recently from, um, so I'm trying to do this freehand, so forgive the camera work. But in any event, it was making a sound, like a loud grounding, a grinding sound because one of the magnets apparently inside this thing came loose or whatever, so. Um, Um, I sent it back, and Stephen at uh, at Wicked slash Wired. I gotta get used to saying that now. Wired Motorbikes, um, e-bikes, fixed it all up, put it back together. Maybe threw an extra couple magnets in there or something. I don't know, but he said you're gonna really, really, really like this motor once you put it back in. So, as you can see, those are the uh, the planetary gears. These are all the pieces. I made sure to take pictures of it as I took it all apart. And, and this is how it kind of came back. I've got uh, got my brake rotor ready to go, the screws, and this is how they sent it back to me because I made the mistake of shipping the motor back with the brake rotor attached to it and it got all bent out of shape and everything. So. They had to send me a new one. He told me not to do it that way, and I did it because I forgot he told me not to do it that way. So my fault. But in any event, he was nice enough to do it. Um, in the interim, we discovered a little piece um, that he didn't know what it was, but I happened to actually know what it was because it's the same exact piece that goes on a pressure washer shaft. It's a little piece of metal that keeps everything uh, connected together. And so I was able to share that with him. So that solved his problem and this new, more powerful rebuild of this uh, of this incredible motor uh, is going to help me out. So my supplies are, I've um, got the brake rotor, I've got all the little screws in there, as you can see. Um, this kind of Allen key thingy, I'm not sure exactly what you call that, but it's not really like an Allen key, but it's got a star with a little indent in the middle. Uh, I've got my grease monkey gloves. I have got my grease because we're going to go over that. And here is the wheel with the hub. And the key is we're going to take some of that grease and put it inside on those teeth. You can see that. Everything looks good. And then um, we're going to bolt the motor back into the tire. And then we're going to put the rotor back on and bolt that on. And then from there, we're gonna go put it back on the bike. So I'm trying to do as much of this as I can inside because I live in South Florida and right now it's like brutally, brutally hot. Like that doesn't even do it justice. That's from my sensor that's in the, in the shade. So I think we're pushing 101 out in the sun uh, with about 95% humidity. So do as much of this as I can inside and then Hopefully maybe wait till a little bit later when the sun goes down and it gets easier um, or a little cooler rather to put this thing back on the bike. So I'll try and do some stop and goes um, as I make progress on this. I know it's going to be incredibly boring <clears throat> to watch every screw get turned and every piece get put back on, etc. But um, I'll do things piece by piece and then I'll take a little short videos of it that way. So wish me luck. I'm not 100% sure exactly but I did take lots of pictures to remember each step of the way and I'll kind of post those up in the video as well. So it would help me to remember um, how to put this thing back together. So well, let's get to work. Okay, so first step first, I took the top off of this grease can. Um, I don't have a grease gun and I'm not gonna invest in one because I'll probably never use this stuff again, maybe once in a while. So I'm gonna go old school. I got my gloves and I don't know if this is going to be fun or gross, but we're going to get some of this. Ugh. Can you see that? This grease. There we go. And we're going to go inside and grease the inside of this hub. I'm trying to look at the camera and the. Ugh. It's actually not too bad. Um, I want to make sure there's plenty in there because hopefully this will last for a while. We'll go in for dive number two. 
And see, you can do this kind of stuff when you're not married. Because if I was married, uh, I'm sure my, if I had a wife, and a couple, I actually have a couple ex-wives, but if I had a wife, probably wouldn't let me be putting grease on tire hubs inside the house. But hopefully you can see that. Let's see. Okay. So now we've got all this, I think, pretty well lubed up. Let's see, all that, which is more than enough, right? What do you think looks good? Yeah. <clears throat> I'm shooting this part with my phone, so. All right, good. So let's go on to try and fit this motor and get that out of the box, and I'll be right back. Okay, so it looks like I got lucky with getting this motor in on the first shot. You can see these holes, they gotta line up with the holes on the, uh, on the, on the rim, but I was able to just get it in. You can see the separation here, I just pulled it out. I don't mess that up. But getting those planetary gears to align with the teeth that are inside the hub, and it worked out perfectly. Maybe it was all that extra grease. And look, I know I may have put too much grease in. Some of you guys may be saying like, dude, that's just way too much. But um, it is what it is and it worked. So I'm excited. I thought I was gonna have to fight with this thing. So the next step is we're gonna go ahead and tighten and put all the bolts in all these places here where they belong. And that would be boring to video. So I'm gonna get that done. And then uh, we'll come back and I believe I flip it on the other side and that's where that, or maybe not, no, 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 because on this side, <laughs> yeah, on, see on this side, that's the, uh, the cassette for the chain. So we're gonna tighten this down first and then we're gonna put the brake rotor back on. And when I took it off, I left the brake rotor on because you're able to go in the teeth, between the teeth and take these screws out but for now since Steven took it off since I messed it up um, we're gonna do it the right way and we're gonna do it the easy way so let me get these bolted down and then we'll go on to step two and get that uh, or the next step rather and get the um, the brake rotor put on all right got to go in my garage and find the screws for that motor actually I know I have them put aside so let me do that put them on I'll be right back all right, so as you can see, we're making progress. The bolts are going on slowly but surely. Um, I'm actually impressed with how easy this process was. I was a little concerned that it might be a little hard to do or whatever, but um, yeah, it's a bit better. So what I've been doing is kind of tightening them in a sort of a crisscross pattern. So like this one, this one, then that one, that one, that one, going across like that. So. Uh, we're almost there. It's all it is is it's a little Allen key um, So that's just kind of like to get them initially started just sort of tighten it up like that Not really anything It's that big of a deal And as it gets tighter I just sort of flip it over and use the side of it focusing correctly. See, I'm just tightening down like that. And a couple times when I was doing that, I could sort of hear the motor um, seating in there. So a little bit of pop, uh, which means I guess it's going in evenly. So I'll uh, pull it to the way. So that's it. Just keep crisscrossing and get this tightened down and then we'll move on to the, uh, move on to the brake rotor and get that on. And then we will, oops. And we will attempt to put it, well, we're not gonna attempt to, we're gonna get it done. We will do this, so like that. And then just turn it across, just sort of hand tight. Um, and we'll go up here and do this one. But anyway, I'm not gonna spend 20 minutes of video showing how to tighten the screw because then everybody will click away. So um, let me finish this up and then I'll come back as soon as we get that rotor on. Okay, so we got the uh, motor attached to the hub. The next step is getting this back on and trying to film it and do it all with 
one hand. Let's see if we can do it. All right, so getting this brake rotor back on. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so referencing back to my pictures, you can see those holes are gonna line up squarely with what's on there. Well, that was easier than I thought. See, sometimes you get intimidated, like you look at all these different parts and things, you're like, oh, it's so hard, but <clears throat> until you actually do it, you realize it's not hard. You can do it. So that's it. So we got all the holes lined up. We got the cord through. Very important. You see that arrow? And this is why I take pictures of before I took it apart. The arrow and the 180, which denotes the size of that brake rotor, um, have to be on the outside. So that will give you the proper direction on that. So I've got my screws and my special tool here. It's like a star key, maybe something like that. But thank goodness I had it. Um, so when they send you these bikes, they always send you all kinds of tools. And so I'm going to go ahead and tighten that down. And then the next step after that will be, probably wait till this afternoon or later when the sun goes down a little bit, um, take this thing outside and put it back on the bike. But I'll reference the picture as well that I took um, so you can see. So step by step, we're getting there. And uh, it's actually not hard. It's not hard at all. You can do it. We'll be back. Okay, so that's it. We got the last one on. We just got to tighten that down. Make sure all of them are tight. Um, which again, I did the same thing. It's sort of like a crisscross pattern when I installed them. And so some of them seem to be a little more turning than others, but I want to tighten down those ones too much. Um, I feel like that's not fitting. Now it's important to note that I did not use, see how this kind of wire thing is. You have to hold that up. Hold it up. Bear with me a second. Um, make sure I think that's fine too. Okay, so I did not use any type of um, Loctite on these. They didn't have any when I took them off, nothing I could see, they're blue or red. Um, so I'm not gonna put them back on, just in case I ever have to change this rotor out or however that may work. So, so for right now, we're good to go. The next step is to get it outside and put it back on the bike. But I will tell you, this 60 volt motor is just an absolute rock star. And Big Tito, I think that's his name, uh, this Hente, uh, Hentac motor. Um, whoever had one said when they got it back, it was faster. And when Steven called me and said, I think you're gonna really, really like the performance of the motor now. Um, so I'm really looking forward to getting this thing on the bike. And it's interesting because we talked about, you know, the different motors and stuff like that. And this is wired slash wicked proprietary design. So nobody can get in there and copy that. So um, I'm excited. Let's get it back on the bike and go for a ride. Okay, so it is the next day. I kind of took a break from it yesterday because it was just too damn hot. And I didn't honestly feel like working on it. But it doesn't look like we're going to get much of a break today, as you can see. So let's go ahead and put that wheel back on. So as you can see, this is townhouse life, trying to cram your whole life into a one-car garage, which is not always an easy thing to do. But in the event, I went back and I referenced the pictures that I took. There's the wheel. There's the bike. It's been sitting upside down for at least a week now. And it is time to put this thing back together. So bear with me, because I'm trying to do this as cameraman and as fixer guy at the same time. So here's all my little parts and pieces and everything and I remembered by looking back again referencing that you have to have this one piece right here that kind of catches that goes on the axle on each side of it which I was kind of like a little bit nervous about because I didn't see it on there and I didn't remember if I had taken it off or I sent it back to wired and they forgot to send it back but here's the good part is that that axle 
is actually kind of, it's not round. So there's only one way, or two ways, that that little nut washer thing with that groove on it is going on there. And so that's a big help. And we go over here, and we're gonna do the same thing, and let me get the other one. And sorry for the video quality, but let's see. Remember they were both up. And see how they can kind of only fit on there one way. And they were both in the up. Oh yeah, see, okay, cool. Okay, so, and yes, yes, good, okay. So see how that little notch thing is on, on the top? And how it is on the top over here. Sorry. There, okay. This is what I'm a little afraid of. Like how, oh man. how does this wheel gonna go back on that with the derailleur and all that stuff there? It looks a little intimidating, but I think it's just gonna come and go on that side, the part of the chain right there. Anyway, there's no way I can do that and hold the camera at the same time. So let me give this a shot and see what I got. I'll be back. Okay, so good news. I got it on. As you can see, uh, it sits right in there. Hopefully, hang on. Bring this up. Okay. So that sits right in there like that. Maybe if I come out this way, it'd be a little easier to see. See that little metal piece behind it, that one right there? That has to sit there. That's what holds that axle and that wheel in place. This was no easy task, I'll be honest with you. I had to mess with it a little bit to figure it out. Um, I don't have a bolt with it, so I don't want to put the bike up, but you can see that piece is where it needs to be on the other side, um, working with the derailleur was hard to try and figure out how to manipulate that back wheel to get it on and to line up with the chain and the derailleur, etc. Kind of have to, and I'm sorry I couldn't show you, but I'm by myself, so I couldn't do both at the same time, but if um, you just kind of bring the rear wheel in at an angle, right, and then sit it down on that frame, and then I had to pick the chain up off the derailleur and put it onto the right gear on the cassette. However, I know I'm good because now I can do this. And I do hear some sand in the pedal part up here, this part. Hear that? So I'm wondering if that's from when I went to the beach, but we'll see, we'll see. So in any event, it's all good news. It all worked out well, I got it back on. So now we're just gonna go through the motions of putting the proper screws back on. Like I know it goes, you get a holder on each side. It's like a holder, a washer, and then the bolt. And then you have two of these skinny things which hold on some pieces back here. I'll have to go back and see one goes into there. Oh, actually that's where that puts that holder in. I'll show you step by step as I go. And then on this side, which is kind of hard to see. And then we just got to reconnect the motor, do our zip tie, and then we should be good to go. So let me get to work on that. I'll be right back. All right, guys. So I want to stop for a second and show you this part. See in there? This one right here is where, again, it's a holder. It is a bolt, uh, the axle. And then that little bolt and this bolt on this side where the cassette is holds the stabilizer protector bar in. So that's how that all works on the back wheel. And again, I mean, it can be a little intimidating, but tighten that down. Then we're left with only the, uh, only the last part on both sides is going to be the washer and then the bolt, and then we'll be done. Same thing on this side. You can see, let's see if I got this. See that? Holder washer and then we're going to put one of these bolts on both sides and then we should be done and good to go here's the good part about everything on this for example on this washer and most of the parts they all have that notch so they're not round except for obviously the that part so when you're putting the washer in and the locking mechanism etc um, there's only one way that it can go in so that's how we're doing 
put these on. Be right back. Okay, so success. We got all the parts on, all that back together. All those nuts and bolts and everything are properly done the way they need to be done. So all I gotta do is reconnect the power. And then I gotta figure out, I go back and look at my pictures, that wire and I think this, there's a place in place for it to zip tie. And I just have to make sure I've got it in the right spot. So I'll do that, we'll flip the bike back over and we'll give it our speed test, which I can't wait for, I'm psyched. All right, be right back. Okay, so that's it. I'm gonna get some, uh, an extra hand here to flip it back over. I zip tied that right there. And honestly, I'm not 100% sure if that's supposed to be on, I think that's supposed to come through the outside and then in, but I can fix that after the fact, but there's, it's not rubbing on the wheel. Um, I will, I'll send a picture to, to Wired and ask them if that's correct or not. Because I don't find any pictures of, uh, I don't think I took any pictures of that the way it was before. But see, there's the kickstand. So I'm kind of wondering if it goes inside the kickstand or out, which I have a feeling it goes on the outside, but we shall see. All right, anyway, that's it. I'm gonna get a hand to flip this thing back over and we are gonna give it a try with the new motor, which is supposed to be way faster. Thanks for watching. I hope you gained a lot of uh, knowledge from this. I know these things are a pain sometimes to figure out, but have a little patience and you can get it done. This is Kevin from What's Kevin Doing? And I'll talk to you later.